If you were in Manhattan in New York City 103 years ago, you would have seen one of the strangest monuments to war. In 1919, Park Avenue had been temporarily renamed Victory Way, and the route transformed into a monumental procession lined with Roman-style columns, adorned with the flags of the United States and other victorious Entente powers. Many captured German field guns were likewise arranged before two monumental pyramids, one outside Grand Central Station. A closer look at either of the pyramids would reveal something quite astounding. Each wooden structure was entirely faced with thousands of German Pickelhauber spiked helmets. In fact, over 12,000 these leather and metal helmets had been used to adorn these extraordinary and theatrical pieces of set dressing. Why? Because the Pickelhauber represented for most people in World War I the symbol of German militarism worn by all German soldiers, from the hated Kaiser to the lowliest private. And indeed it was so, for most German regiments had entered World War I using the spiked helmet. The design dated from 1842, actually personally designed by Friedrich Wilhelm IV of Prussia. The design probably came originally from Napoleonic-era helmets, and was adopted by not only Germany, but also Russia and many other countries such as Sweden and even Britain, who had a version called the Albert helmet. It looked impressive, but by 1914 it was outdated for modern warfare particularly the trench warfare that followed, its design offering little practical protection from artillery shrapnel, head and shoulder injuries being the most common for the soldiers serving in the trenches. In 1916, the Germans introduced the excellent Stahlhelm, or steel helmet, and head wounds decreased by an astounding 73%. So what happened to all those beautiful Pickelhauben? Aside from ceremonial use, or being personally retained by officers, the majority were handed in by the troops in exchange for the new Stahlhelm. The Pickelhauben was stored in warehouses. Come the end of the war and the United States was assigned an occupation zone in Germany, and it found and took possession of warehouses containing tens of thousands of Pickelhauben, along with millions of German weapons and hundreds of thousands of tons of equipment and supplies surrendered from November 1918 onwards. So what to do with all this captured booty? Why not make some money out of it? And that is exactly what the United States decided it to do. During the war, the US, like all other nations on both sides, used war bond drives to raise cash to pay for military equipment and so on. War bonds acted as a system of debt for the government at war. Some cash amount was directly paid to the government by a civilian in order to immediately fund the war effort, and then the civilian was promised some sort of extra compensation once the war had concluded and the nation's economy returned to normal. U.S. war bonds have, throughout history, promised a better return on the investment once victory is achieved. But Victory Way in New York City was something new. This time the U.S. government would sell captured German military equipment to the highest bidder. All along Victory Way, there were stalls staffed by U.S. government contractors where you could purchase German Mauser rifles, bayonets, swords, pistols, and much else besides. The artillery pieces were also for sale and were often given as premiums to towns who bought a certain number of war bonds. Regarding the Pickelhauben of the pyramids and the thousands more in storage, they too were given away as premiums this time to individuals who purchased a certain value of war bonds, each receiving a free Pickelhauber spiked helmet as a premium gift. This is why the United States is full of Pickelhauben. Even though this type of helmet was withdrawn from frontline service in 1916, the year before the U.S. entered the war. In fact, the U.S. has one of the largest stocks of these helmets in the world. And here's a strange thought. In 1916, Adolf Hitler, a foot soldier in a Bavarian infantry regiment, exchanged his Pickelhauber for a Stahlhelm. So perhaps Hitler's spiked helmet was among those that ended up in America in 1919. 
perhaps adorning one of two pickle halber pyramids on Park Avenue. If you own one of these helmets, have a good look inside. Perhaps A. Hitler marked his name. You could be sitting on a tidy fortune. As it is, these pickle halber helmets remain extremely collectible and heavily faked. The real ones, of course, worth many thousands of dollars today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.